What's up, it's the Fish Tank Guy, and welcome to an update on the five gallon Pico Reef. Now, it's been quite a while since I've given you guys an update, and a lot has changed about the tank. Uh, at first glance, you'll see the, it's not necessarily for the better, right? Uh, I'm giving you right now a view from the long end of the tank, and as you can see, I have a lot of algae, I have a lot of growth on the glass, I have some uh, cyano, cyano uh, I don't know how they pronounce it, right? I uh, got that purple algae on the sand and the tank overall just isn't looking very good. Now the reason I want to give you guys an update today is because I'm going to test a recent theory slash, slash research question that I did on my podcast which was how do you get rid of Aptasia? Are Aptasia good or bad? So let me swing the camera around here. So as you can see, there is a large Aptasia here and there is another one here that you probably can't see because of all the gook on the glass. And actually there are a few more heads of Aptasia in the tank. So what I decided to do was go ahead and purchase a peppermint shrimp, which was one of the creatures of the saltwater reef hobby that when researched found that they eat Aptasia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the test. I definitely have three to four heads of Aptasia in this tank. I'm going to put this peppermint shrimp in and see how he does. I'm going to give you guys an update in a few days from now, in a week from now, in two weeks from now, and let's see if he has cleaned up the Aptasia. So I'm going to swing around and give you an angle from the other side of the tank here before we wrap up. Now, from this side of the tank, you may or may not be able to see that there are a bunch of green mushrooms in the aquarium. There are some candy cane coral, and there is this thing right here. This thing here is the most hardy coral that I've ever had in my entire life. It spent most of its life face down in the sand, and still it has bounced back and is kicking better than ever. Now, if you recognize these green mushrooms here, that's because this rock is from the 10 gallon nano reef. If you recognize this green candy coral cane here, Wow, if you recognize this green candy cane coral here, uh, that's because it's from my BioCube. This is a fragged off piece from the BioCube and as you can see, it is alive and doing very well, I might say, in the five gallon Pico Reef with the stock lighting. Now, one of the objectives that I had when starting this video series was to let you guys know if this tank is suitable for growing coral and honestly, it is beyond a doubt. Um, now, I didn't mention down here in the bottom left corner the sun coral that I have. That is because it's not doing very well, and quite honestly, it's a pain in the butt to take care of. But I've moved it into this tank in attempts to kind of revitalize it, but I'm not doing a very good job uh, because I simply don't come down and spend the time to put some food in the water, wait for the polyps to come out, then feed each polyp individually. So it's not going very well for the sun coral, but hopefully. I can pick it up a little bit and save it. So uh, I am the fish tank guy. Thank you so much for watching this brief update on the five gallon Pico Reef. The next time you guys see this tank, I hope it's gonna be Aptasia free. I hope it's gonna be much cleaner and I hope my sun coral is gonna be doing a little bit better or the sun coral will be gone and you'll know that it uh, went kaplooey. So, um, all right, once again, I am the fish tank guy. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you have not yet subscribed, uh, it would be awesome if you could do that and hit that bell notification for or when I post new videos. Um, that's all I've got for today. So until a future Fish Tank Guy video, I will see you guys soon.